Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. We've got a fun one for you today. Got a little tab right there at the bottom of this section. If I hover on it, it's going to push the content below down. And a little info box is going to scale in. You can read it, you can do what you want. Take your mouse off. It's going to scale back out again go back to how it was and that'll work on tablet and phone also there's absolutely no coding involved in this at all today we're just using the inbuilt features of the Divi theme itself to do this so let's get started I'm going to enable the visual builder I'm going to go down and delete what I've going, got going on here which is pretty much just a row Okay, and let's put this section back to how it was. So it's just like a regular section. The only thing I've done is taken away any padding at the bottom. So if I delete that, we just got a regular section there. Three little blurb modules and a little section below. I'm gonna add a new row under these blurbs, a little green button to add a new row. I'm gonna use a single column for mine. In the top, I'm going to put a little text module right down at the bottom here we've got a text module and I'm going to have mine say more information whatever you want yours to say great well while we're here I'm going to make it a black background you can barely see that writing easiest way to get to the writing is just hit the little paint brush when you hover over It'll take you straight to that text I'm going to make it white so we can see it I'm also going to pop it into the middle if we roll down a little bit. That's great. That's all I really want to do there. Now, this is the bit that I'm going to use for a tab. So I'm going to make the top corners of this rounded. Very easy to do. Still in design. If we roll down a bit more, we've got a border there. I'm going to uncheck the chain. If you leave it checked and highlighted like that, it'll do all four corners at once. I want to do them separately. So I'm going to put about 8 pixels on the top left and the same on the top right. Just put in the 8, it'll put in the pixels for you. And we've got little rounded corners there. That's great. But as this is a tab, I don't want it to be as wide as that. I just want it to be a little bit wider than the word more information or the words more information itself. So to fix that still in design, let's close up border. We can do that with sizing. We can go down. There's width right there. Uh, I think that's probably 200 pixels or so. I'm going to make mine maybe 250 pixels wide. So I'm going to type in 250px. If you don't put the pix in, in in the width there, it'll do it as a percentage, and that's not what I need. That's great, but I want it in the middle of the actual column that it's in. So just module alignment down here. I can pop it there. Fantastic. Okay, below this, we want to drop some content that's going to come in and you can put in anything you want let's just save what we've got here I'm going to roll over I'm going to add a new module if you have trouble like this at the moment my little green row buttons on top of my little dark add new module button if you have that problem you can hit the little purple button little icon on the left hand side there wireframe view click on it it'll take you to the back end and here we are there's my little text module right there so I'm going to hit the little dark button that we can see now. And I'm just going to use a blurb that I used before. In fact, I've got it in my library here somewhere. There it is right there. And it's just a regular blurb module with that info icon. Once we've got it in there, we can flip back to the desktop view. If I roll down. It's just a regular blurb module. Icon I'm using is the info icon. Title is important. And i got a bit of content there. But that's great. And you can add more modules. It just doesn't have to be this one here. You can add more modules if you want down below this. I'm just going to use that though. But I don't really want any gap. I want the tab to kind of be right on the top of this next module. To achieve that, just a couple of things we've got to do. Go into your row, the green tab right there. Over to design down to sizing here you'll see custom gutter width now gutters are the space between above and below little modules right here so I'm going to flip that to 
Yes. I'm going to flip it all the way to the left so it goes down to one. We've got no gutters there, so that's actually touching our module, which is fantastic. Just exactly what I wanted. Okay, if I just roll this module up, initially, I just want to see the tab sitting on the top of the section, this dark section that's just below it. So still in the sizing, I'm going to roll down a bit to height. I'm going to pull this down as far as I can till I can only just see the black tab at the top. And you can see it's the contents sitting above our section below, but we'll hide that in a second. 100 picks, not enough. I'd say it's about 25 picks. We'll leave it like that. But when we're not hovering over it, if I leave it like this, when we hover anywhere within here, below this area here, it's going to trigger it. I don't want it to do that. I just want it to trigger basically when they hover over that tab. So like I say, while we're in here, I know that's 250 picks wide. I'm going to make this 250 picks. And again, you'll have to put the PX in. So it's 250 and PX. And it's made it the same width as our tab, which is great. Well, we're getting there. But like I say, I don't want to see any of this stuff that falls below the height that we've made that row. To hide it, we go over to advanced. We're still in our row, down to visibility. And these settings are all common. Visibility is always on the advanced tab. Background is always on the content tab, etc. If we look at the advanced and visibility, we've got horizontal and vertical overflow. I'm going to change both of those to hidden. Now you may see it on the back end. You may see a little bit of overflow spill here. Occasionally when you're rolling around, it'll pop up. But that's fine. You won't see it on the bottom end. Okay, well that's okay, but our tab's kind of floating up top in the middle there, which is, I don't want that at all. Now to fix that, let's just save what we've got going on in our row. The reason it's floating up in the middle there is our section up here has got a bit of padding on the bottom by default. So blue tab for the section. Once in the section, we'll go over to design and spacing. In the bottom padding, we've got padding here, top and bottom. I'm going to put my cursor in there. I'm going to simply put a zero in there. And that's brought it up like that. Fantastic. So let's save that. It's just slightly higher than I want it there. Let's just go into this row. We'll do the same thing. I want to make sure it's not got any padding on the bottom because that could affect the size. So again, I'm in the row. I'm going over to design going to go to spacing let's put a zero in the bottom there yeah that's dropped it down a bit so that's absolutely fine but if I hit the chain and take any padding off the top as well make sure we've got a zero in both now we can go down I think I've just got to adjust it that's kind of nice having that little separating line there if you want to leave that that's great we'll leave it just like it is if you want to change it let's close up the spacing we'll go into our sizing We'll create that hover effect as well while we're in here. If I go down to height now, if I was to reduce that just a little bit more, that little line disappears so you can have it sitting directly on top of that or with another pixel, you've got that little white, white separator. I kind of like that. I'm going to leave that just like that. I didn't have it on my original one. Great. Well, let's create our hover effect in here. And this is common to all Divi modules. If you hover over the dark riding within a module, You'll see some little icons appear. Go to the thing that you want to affect. In my case, the height. If there's a little arrow there. We can create a nice little hover effect. We've got desktop tab and a hover tab. Desktop's when the mouse is not on it. Obviously, the hover tab is when the mouse is on it. So if you click on the hover tab, the little arrow there, I'm now going to change that to 100%. So however many modules you've got in there or however much information you've got in the blurb module and any other modules you've got down below, it'll go to that height. And that's great. But of course, we've done the width on it as well. And I want it to go back to full width when it's up like this and let's push the section down below. To make that happen, we do exactly the same with the width. I'm going to roll up the width and make sure you Go over the width, get its little arrow up, click on the hover, and again, I'm going to put in 100%, 100 and the percent sign. And as you can see, it's now stretched back to where it should have been, which is great. So we've got this, 
on desktop where it's sitting on top of our section below when we hover over it it's going to push it down and expand to reveal the content now the time it takes to get from one to the other with Divi by default it's 300 milliseconds which is pretty quick if you want to slow it down for a bit of drama you can do that over in the advanced tab down to transitions there's transition duration there's the default 300 mils you can type in a value or you can slide up the slider let's make it take about I don't know whatever you want if you slide it up all the way and it doesn't go as far as you want you can just type in a larger value there I don't think I want three seconds on mine which is 3000 milliseconds let's do a second and a half that's going to be pretty slow transition delay I think I might put a little transition delay transition delay is the amount of time it takes before it reacts when you put your mouse on it so let's put in maybe 20 milliseconds just so that if they're mousing around and suddenly go across it it's not going to activate but if they actually put their mouse on it and hold it it's going to activate so I think I might use that today my transition speed curve that I like to use with these effects is ease in ease out great well if we've done everything correctly this should now work for us let's save our changes save draft or publish if you're ready and let's execute the visual builder roll on down there's our little tab right there when I hover over it it's going to expand and show our content and of course you can roll over if you've got call to actions or forms in there they can fill them out do whatever they want there anytime you get off of this row whether it's the top or the side it's going to fold back in like that and go back to how it was like I say no plugins involved no coding involved and that's a nice little interactive feature to add to your site for your visitors so there you go guys there's how to add a nice little drop down tab that reveals itself on hover I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful if you have please give it a thumbs up ring the bell comment share and subscribe to the YouTube channel once again this has been Jamie from system 22 and webdesignandtechtips.com thanks for watching have a great day